From Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Minneapolis, Minnesota, and New York City, New York, the National Broadcasting Company presents the College Quiz Bowl. Here again is the all-American quiz game that matches against each other the varsity scholars of two great American colleges in the College Quiz Bowl. Tonight, the champion for the past three weeks, the University of Minnesota, on the air from Minneapolis, will be challenged by the varsity scholars of the University of Pennsylvania, broadcasting from Philadelphia. And here in Radio City, New York, is your master of the quiz, Alan Ludden. Hello there, everybody. It's good to have you with us for another intercollegiate battle of the brains. Tonight, the University of Pennsylvania has come up with a team it feels sure will take the champion's crown away from Minnesota. But I don't think the Gophers have any intention of giving it up, at least not without a fight. So... Let's go out to Minneapolis first to meet the Minnesota team, which will be trying to make it four Quiz Bowl victories in a row. Back again to act as Minnesota's referee is Ben Layton of Station KSTP. Are you there, Ben? Yes, sir. And also here in Murphy Hall is a good group of Minnesota rooters who are here to cheer on their team. Tom Clayton, Winona, Minnesota. Roger Feinstein, Pelham, New York. Colleen Helgeson, Excelsior, Minnesota. And Jack Davies, Coleraine, Minnesota. Yes! Yeah! the Minnesota team. Now let's meet the competition. On hand in Philadelphia to serve as Pennsylvania's referee is John Franklin of station KYW. How does the Penn team shape up, John? Very well, in my opinion, Alan. I'd say that the general feeling here in the International House is that Minnesota has been in the quiz bowl long enough. And here's the Pennsylvania team which would like to replace them in the winner's circle. Jerry Flood, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Ed Becker, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Margie Schwimmer, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Martin Griffin, St. Petersburg, Florida. Okay, Roger Tuttle, we've met the team. Now, will you give us the rules for this battle of wits? Well, Alan, the quiz is set up to determine how much these varsity scholars know and how quickly they can call upon their knowledge. And so, we have toss-up questions. And this is the way they work. Alan Ludden asks a question, and the first team to signal it has the answer gets a chance to answer. When Pennsylvania signals, you'll hear... When Minnesota signals, you'll hear... And by means of a special electronic selector, the team which signals first, even by a split second, activates its light here on the board in front of Alan and makes it impossible for the other team's light to flash. Now, if the team winning a chance at the toss-up question gives a wrong answer... The question team. And whichever team gives the right answer gets a bonus question. Each question is worth a designated number of points. And the team with the most points at the end of the game is the winner and returns next week to defend its title in the college quiz bowl. Well, that's the way the game is played, so now let's play it. Okay, and there's the opening whistle, and here is the first toss-up question. But may I tell you first, before I read the toss-up question, that the one who gets this, the team that gets this toss-up question right, gets a chance at a 40-point possible bonus question. In other words, coming up is a 40-point bonus. So on your toes, here we go with our first toss-up question. Brother Samuel has recently joined Brother Herbert as a part of the Republican administration in Washington. For 10 points, who are Samuel and Herbert? Minnesota. Colleen Helgerson has her hand up. Okay, Colleen. Um, Herbert, is Herbert Brownell the Attorney General and Samuel, is Samuel Brownell the new Commissioner of Education? You're right for 10 points and you have won for Minnesota. <laughs> a chance at a 40-point bonus. Okay. Minnesota, here we are. Anybody on the Minnesota team can answer these. This is a four-part question. Since this is Thanksgiving time, we want to see if you can, for 10 points each, Identify the following real and fictional pilgrims. Okay, Minnesota, anybody on the team? One, a pilgrim who served about 30 terms as governor. Anybody? Yes, Colleen has it. Colleen? Uh, governor Bradford. Right, for 10 points. 10 more points. Coming up for you, if you can tell us what pilgrim was immortalized by John Bunyan. By John Bunyan. Tom Clayton. Uh, Christian. Right for 10 points. Christian is the leading character, of course, in the Pilgrim's Progress. All right, ten more points for Minnesota if you'll tell us the bashful pilgrim who sent a proxy to Priscilla. Uh, Jack Davies. Well, standard. Right for ten more points. In the narrative poem by Henry Longfellow. You'll get ten more points now if you'll tell us a group of 29 pilgrims who relate stories to each other during their pilgrimage to the shrine of St. Thomas a Becket. 
Uh, Jack again. Uh, the Pilgrims of uh, Canterbury Tales. Right. That's the Pilgrims who told the stories in Judge Chaucer's Canterbury Tales. Okay, here's a toss-up question. Are you there, Pennsylvania? We're all here. All right, hold on to your hats. Here we go. The one who wins this toss-up question will have a chance at a 20-point bonus question. Football cheers and yells are usually in modern vernacular, but Yale University has a yell that is borrowed from the classics. Now, for 10 points, we want you to name the Greek comedy that originated this Yale cheer. Brekkie Kex, Coax, Coax. Pennsylvania. Ed Becker. Uh, Aristophanes the Frogs. Right. Can you tell us more about that, uh, Ed? You got 10 points for Pennsylvania. That, that, that cheer actually came from something in that play, didn't it? Well, uh... <clears throat> The frogs in the in the pool. Uh, I think the river the river sticks. Or yeah. And Sharon was uh, praying people across the river sticks, and the frogs constantly were screaming out brackety cacks, quacks, quacks, and so on. You're the so play. right, boy. You're on the ball there. You got ten points of Pennsylvania and earned a right now to win a bonus point, bonus mm -hmm. question, which could earn you twenty points. Bennett Surf said this week. Anybody in Pennsylvania answer this? Bennett Surf said this past week. The man who wouldn't talk is talked too much. For 20 points, tell us what he meant. The man who wouldn't talk has talked too much. What did Bennett Surf mean when he said that? Ed Becker has... Maybe he was talking about Harry Dexter White. No, can you, uh, anybody on the team take it? It's a contemporary question of this past week. Uh, Marge? Wasn't that Truman when uh, he wasn't going to say anything? No, I think Jerry better... Flood uh, has... J. Edgar been. Hoover? No, <laughs> we're getting a little political. Let me tell you, it's about a very interesting story in which Quentin Reynolds, you know, has uh, published in this in the current Reader's Digest a story of, uh, about Mr. George Dupre oh. and his uh, so-called adventures in, in the underground in France during the last war. And just as the book was published and the magazine article is appearing on the newsstands, Mr. Dupre is revealed as being a hoax, and it, we've been fooling people with over six years with his stories. And that was what Bennett Cerf, who is the president of Random House, who's published the book, The Man Who Wouldn't Talk, was referring to. Okay, now before we move along, I'd like to move over here to Roger Tuttle, who will tell us what the stakes are in this quiz game. Roger? Each week, NBC will award to the school of the winning team a $500 gift to be administered by the college. Now, it may go to a scholarship fund or to a campus activity. And each member of the losing team will receive an attractive, dependable Whitnauer wristwatch. A distinguished member of the Longines Whitnauer family of fine watches. Since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. Well, those are the stakes. And now with a score, Minnesota 50 points, Pennsylvania 10 points, we go back to a toss-up question. And remember, the team answering it correctly gets the chance at a bonus question. Alan? Okay, the bonus question coming up is a 30-point music question. Classical music. Okay, here is the toss-up. What famous artist of the Renaissance wrenched his neck while painting 10,000 square feet of surface. Minnesota. Colleen Helgerson raised her hand. All right, Colleen. Michelangelo. Oh, you're right. When he was painting the Sistine Chapel. You're right for 10 points, Colleen. That's a, that's a myth, the so-called, about when he, while he was painting the Sistine Chapel. You remember that, huh? Okay, now here's your bonus question, Minnesota, that Colleen just earned for you. Some music questions, I promise. Now, for ten points each, we want you to tell us the animal named in the following composition. Speak up when you know it. Well, that would be uh, That's Peter's theme from Peter and the Wolf. That's right, the animal being the wolf. That's very fine. You know who wrote it? Uh, Sarah Prokopia. You're right. Ten more points for Minnesota. All right. Here's your second composition. What animal is mentioned in this one? Uh, the donkey. Donkey serenade. Right for ten points. Now, can you tell us the animal mentioned in this title? It's, it's Tchaikovsky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Swan. Swan Lake. Oh, you got it for yeah. ten points. Swan Lake for ten points. Oh, when you said the whale, I almost told you. All right, here we go back to a toss-up question. Coming up is a 25-point bonus. For ten points, tell us. What famous, world-famous experience of the four follow... Let me restart this over. For ten points, tell us what world-famous experience the four following people shared. 
Do not push your buzzer until I have named the fourth person. John Craxton, Richard Bitteridge, Degney Priest, and William Brewster. Anybody? Minnesota. Colleen Helgerson. I would say that they went over on the Mayflower. You would say right, Colleen, for ten points. They were all passengers on the Mayflower, which cut sail on September 19, 1620, and crossed the Atlantic in 63 days. Okay, Colleen, you earned for Minnesota a 25-point bonus question. Now, here it is, Minnesota. Anybody on the Minnesota team? The myth of Althea's horn has a connection with Thanksgiving, and since this is the Saturday before Thanksgiving, we would like you now for 25 points to tell us what is the myth of Althea's horn. What is Althea's horn? It's the horn of plenty. Yeah, that's right. It's the horn of plenty. Plenty. All right, for 25 points, you got it right. Do you know anything more about that myth? Who was that? Sorry. Roger, do you know about that myth? Well, it just... Uh, the food and all the good things of life just came out of it. That's right. And Zeus gave it to her. Zeus gave it to Althea in, in gratitude for taking care of him. You remember? It was a goat's horn. He said there would always be plenty of food, abundance of everything she desired coming out of it. That's good boy. Okay. What's the score, Roger? Well, Alan, the Gophers of Minnesota are borrowing deep tonight 125 points to Pennsylvania's 10 points, and we have 16 and a half minutes to go in the quiz tonight. Okay, and before we get back, may I correct myself there? The I was calling it Althea, and it's Amalthea. 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 I'm sorry. I'm surprised you didn't correct me, Roger. I was <laughs> very wrong. <laughs> okay, here we go back to a toss-up question. Are you ready, Pennsylvania? Everybody ready. Are you ready, Minnesota? Ready in Minnesota. For ten points, what famous football player of the past sounds as though he might have belonged to an agricultural organization? <laughs> Minnesota. Jack Davies. A uh, Red Grange. Okay, Red Grange for ten points, the famous <laughs> Illinois halfback. Incidentally, the winner tonight meets Illinois next week. Okay, you won for that now, an extemporaneous question, Minnesota. You won a chance at our extemporaneous question. We haven't had one in a long time. Well, who's the best one of the Minnesota team to speak up on the general subject of women? Tom Slayton. <laughs> Okay, Tom, you're it. In 30 seconds, you can earn 20 points for Minnesota. But remember, I'm going to judge you, and, for, and 20 points will be your top score. Now, your subject for the next 30 seconds is why I prefer blondes for Saturday night dates. Uh, it, it's an unfair question. It's a question of my life. I'll be guillotined. I have two lovely brunettes in the audience. I see at least three. three. Uh, one good reason is blondes are women. Uh, <laughs> also, they're probably only brunettes in disguise. About two thirds of them are. <laughs> and, and being this kind of thing, it be, makes a wonderful thing to take out on Saturday night. I see. I think that's a very, very succinct statement of why you prefer blondes for Saturday night. And for that, I'll give Minnesota twenty points. Very good, Tom. <laughs> give him a hand. All right. Back to Pennsylvania and Minnesota with a toss-up question. Here we go. A literary-minded literary minded dog owner recently named two of his three female puppies, Cordelia and Regan. For ten points, what name will this man probably give his third dog? Minnesota. Tom Clayton. Uh, Gunneril. <laughs> That's right, for ten points. <laughs> Cordelia and Regan, of course, are out of... The daughter's out of King Lear, and Gonro was the third daughter, and it's a very logical choice. Okay, for that, you won a 40-point bonus question, Minnesota. Many writers have sought to describe an imaginary heaven on earth where everything is perfect. Now, for 10 points each, we want you to tell us the names giving to, given to these earthly paradises. First, the earthly paradise created by Thomas More, Sir Thomas More. Anybody? A utopia. Utopia, that's right. For ten points. All right, the earthly paradise created by Francis Bacon for ten points. Air one? No. Atlantis. 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 What, what was that? Atlantis. Yeah, the new Atlantis, an allegorical romance by Francis Bacon. All right, for ten points. Now, for ten more points. The earthly paradise created by James Hilton. Paradise Laws. Or, uh, Shangri-La. Oh, Shangri-La. Lost Horizon. Well, Shangri-La. Shangri-La. In Lost Horizon. Oh, it. everybody's working in Minnesota. All right, you'll tell us. The Earthly Paradise Created by Voltaire in his novel, Candide. Oh. Candide, Voltaire. 
El Dorado. El Dorado, a place of great riches in South America where the mud consisted of gold and the pebbles were precious jewels. Okay, what's the score, Roger? Well, Alan, right now, Minnesota is leading 195 points, but Pennsylvania says they're waiting for the second half. They've only got 10 points. Okay, what's up question? Worth 10 points. Uh-oh. For 10 points, name the last book of the New Testament. <laughs> Minnesota. Jack Davies. A revelation. Can you take it, Pennsylvania? Can you take it, Pen Uh, Ed Becker has an idea. Uh, Corinthians? Nope, I'm sorry you both missed it, and it leaves it with me to answer, and I'm sorry because it's the word I yeah. couldn't pronounce last week. It's the apocalypse. Okay. <laughs> Hold it, Alan. That's halftime whistle, which calls for a one-minute timeout right now. All right, we got a ha we got a minute here. I want to talk, first of all, to Pennsylvania. Say, what's going on down there in Pennsylvania tonight? Marty Griffin, you got the word? Well, tonight... <clears throat> Pennsylvania's Mask and Wig Club has its first showing in Philadelphia of the Golden Fleece at the Forest Theater. The Golden Fleece, that's the name of the show? That's right. How's the company? The company's very good. How are the girls? The girls are very good, too. They're all men, and they do a very good job as curls girls. <laughs> what do they wear? Dresses. <laughs> they, are they beautiful? Very lovely girls, indeed. Everybody in your camp is excited about the show, huh? Everyone is. It opens tonight for students especially, and then from the 23rd until the 28th, it has an extended run in Philadelphia. And, and that Alan, goes on tour. Yeah. Alan, they've, uh, they've assured us, by the way, that they're all going, too. Oh, everybody on the team's going tonight, huh? Yes. Okay, now out in Minnesota, I think I better talk to Colleen Helgeson this week. Hadn't talked to you in a long time, Colleen. Tell me, Colleen, what was the best thing that happened to you this past week? Well, the tufted titmouse has been seen in St. Cloud. The what? <laughs> The, uh, you're a bird lover, huh? Yes, yes. Okay, do you oh, describe a tufted titmouse? Well, a tufted titmouse. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a tufted titmouse is a small bird who's related to the chickadees and nuthatches. Did you make He's... a sound like one? <whistles> well, that's wonderful. That's <laughs> wonderful. And you saw one in St. Cloud this No, week. no, I didn't see one, but it has been seen there. You see, um, uh, about 75 years ago. Oh, we got I'm sorry, Alan. <laughs> okay. It's time to get back to the quiz. Okay. And with a score, Minnesota 195 points, Pennsylvania 10 points. How about another toss-up question, Alan? Okay, here we go. Are you ready for 10 points? What state is known as the Magnolia State? <laughs> Minnesota. Roger Feinstein. Roger. Uh, South Carolina. Can you take it, Pennsylvania? Uh, Marty Griffin. Georgia. Nope, you both missed it. It's Minnesota Okay, here's another toss-up question. For ten points, what hesitant hero out of modern poetry asks, Shall I part my hair behind? Do I dare to eat a peach? Pennsylvania. Ed Becker. J. Alfred Prufrock. Right. T.S. Eliot, the love song of J. Alfred Prufrock. Ten points for Pennsylvania and a chance at a 25-point bonus. All right, just 25 years ago, Pennsylvania, this month, a man named Maxim Litvinov made a very important visit to the United States. For 25 points, tell us the results of this famous, this historic visit. Uh, Ed? I think that was the time when the United States finally recognized the government of Russia. Right for 25 points, Pennsylvania. <laughs> okay, here we go back to a toss-up question. Nurse Lightbody will soon have to share some of her authority with Miss Peeble. Now for 10 points, who is Nurse Lightbody? Nobody can take it. All right, I must tell you that Helen Lightbody is Prince Charles' nurse, and Miss Peeble will be his governess, the royal governess, and he will, he will be trained by both of them then. All right, then let's go back to a toss-up question. It's a musical toss-up question. It's a switch. It's worth ten points. Now, we're going to play a composition that should remind you of a very important cultural and uh, social event of this past week. You are to signal when you know the event. <laughs> Minnesota. Colleen Helgerson has her hand up. Well, that would be the opening of the first opera in the Metropolitan Opera season. All right. What was it? Do you know? It was, uh, would it be? <laughs> well, you, you... It's Faust. Faust. Yeah, you were reminded. This aria was from Faust. <laughs> okay, you got it right, though, because you named the event. That was ten points. Okay, for winning that ten-point question, you get another chance at a music question. Minnesota, a 45-point possible... No, it's only a 30-point possible music question. I beg your pardon. We're going to play three popular uh, music, uh, popular classical uh, pop tunes. 
in the field of popular tunes. I better get back to my script, don't you think? I'll read it as it's written here, and it says, we're going to play three classics in the field of pop tunes, and we want you to tell us for ten points each the color that's named in its title. Okay, what color is named in this title? Purple. Purple. Purple, right, Colleen, for ten points. What color is named in this title? Blue skies. Blue skies, ten points. What color is named in this title? Green eyes. That's right, for ten points. Okay, what's the score, Roger? Score right now is Minnesota 235 points, Pennsylvania 45 points, and we have seven minutes to go in the... Uh, seven and a half minutes to go, really, in the quiz. Okay, Pennsylvania, let's get going. Coming up next is a bonus question that could earn you 50 points. If you get this tossed up, here we go. The CIO, the Congress of Industrial Organizations, this year celebrates its 50th year as a permanent organization. Now, for 10 points, can you name... Oh, it's 15th year, I beg your pardon celebrates its 15th year as a permanent organization. For 10 points, we want you to name the first president of the CIO. Minnesota. Jack Davies had his hand up. Uh, John L. Lewis. Right for 10 points, Minnesota. Okay, Jack, you got a chance for Minnesota now at a 50-point bonus question. 10 points each part. We want you to tell us what plays an important role in, one, a treasure story by Edgar Allan Poe. The gold bug. Right, for ten points. What creature plays an important part in the death of Cleopatra? Asp. Right, for ten points. In the upbringing of Mog- Mowgli. In the upbringing of Mowgli. A wolf. Right, the mother wolf who, ro- who raised Mowgli in the jungle book. Right, for ten points. Okay. What creature plays an important part in guarding of Hades, according to Roman legend? A dog, Cerberus. Cerberus, the three-headed dog, right for ten points. All right, what creature is mentioned or is indicated in the haunting novel by Nathaniel Hawthorne, published in 1860? Uh, Fawn. Right for ten points, Minnesota. (laughs) Boy, you're hot tonight, aren't you? Okay, here we go back to the toss-up. For ten points, how long did the Greeks lay siege to Troy? Pennsylvania. Marty Griffin. Ten years. Ten years, right for Pennsylvania. You're going to toss up a bonus question worth 20 points. For 20 points, Pennsylvania, in what literary work does a man prepare to meet a fairy queen by taking three drops of vinegar in at the nose, two at the mouth, and one at either ear? What literary work does a man meet a fairy queen by doing that? Anybody in Pennsylvania know that? No, I don't think so. You will when I tell you it was Dapper and Ben Johnson's The Alchemist. Okay, let's get back to a toss-up question. Here we go for 10 points. In the familiar song, Casey Jones, what time did the caller call Casey? Minnesota. Roger Feinstein. Half past eight. Can you take it, Pennsylvania? Any idea? Ed, Ed Becker. Quarter to eight? (laughs) No. (laughs) Half past four and you would have got it. All right, here we go back to a toss-up question. For ten points, what man was condemned to death for the corruption of youth? Roger Feinstein. Socrates. Right for 10 points, Roger. You want a chance for Minnesota the 20-point bonus. For 20 points, name the man whose chronicles of the Greco-Persian Wars brought him the title of Father of History. Herodotus. Right for 20 points, Minnesota. Back. We're hot tonight. Back to a toss-up question. A man named Peter Minuet made a famous purchase. For 10 points, tell us what Peter bought. Pennsylvania. Jerry Flood. New York City. Uh, Ed Becker. Manhattan no. Island. No, uh, wait, 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 we got a toss-up. We got a, we got a rhubarb here. You said New York City, it's Manhattan, Manhattan. Island. I'm going to accept it. I'm going to accept it, Pennsylvania, because in effect, that's what he bought. Manhattan Island, that's what Peter Minuet bought. And you got a chance at a 30-point bonus, Pennsylvania. For 10 points each, I want you to place the following villains in literature. Anybody in the Pennsylvania team? Bill Sykes. For ten points. Jerry. Oliver Twist. Right. For ten points, Penn. All right. What what literature did this villain come from? Popeye. Popeye. A villain. A very, very villainous villain. Ed? In the comic strips, isn't he? Popeye the Sailor Man? Oh, he's no villain. (laughs) You don't remember? The racketeer villain in William Faulkner's Sanctuary. A vile creature. Okay. 
What villain does this, in, in what literature does this villain appear? Iago. Uh, and Otello. Otello, Shakespeare's Otello. Okay, back to a toss-up question. For ten points now, Minnesota or Pennsylvania, when the Lord decided to purge the land by a great flood, how long did he cause it to rain? Minnesota. Tom Clayton. Forty days and forty nights. Right for ten points, you got a chance at a twenty-point bonus. Anybody in the Minnesota team, tell me. A joey, spelled J-O-E-Y, is the name of a certain kind of young animal. For 20 points, tell us what kind. Young kangaroo. Right, Colleen, for 20 points. <laughs> okay, we're going back to a toss-up question. Either team, listen. For 10 points, name the newly elected president of the Philippines. Pennsylvania. Ed Becker. Raymond McSaisai. Right for 10 points, Pennsylvania. You got a chance at a 20 point bonus. For 20 points, who wrote a book consisting of a discourse among Piscator, Venator, and Oseps? A discourse between Piscator, Venator, and Oseps. What did I hear? Fisher in a hunter room. Try and translate it. Yeah. <laughs> Marge is working on it. You're working on it right, too. A discourse between Piscator, Venator, and Osa. Oh, I can think of the Angler's Handbook. Well, you're pretty near. Who wrote it? And you'll be near... Isaac Walton? That's right, for 20 points, Pennsylvania. Okay, here we go back to a toss-up question. For 10 points, Pennsylvania or Minnesota, tell me, what does UNESCO stand for? Pennsylvania. Ed Becker. United Nations Educational, Social, and Cultural Organization. Can you take it, Minnesota? Economic. Yes. Jack Davies? United Nations Education. Uh, 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 time is up. I've got to tell you, he missed it by saying social instead of scientific. It's the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization. Okay, back to a toss-up question. For ten points, Minnesota or Pennsylvania, tell us. According to Longfellow, how many lanterns Paul Revere's friend actually hung in the old North Church? Minnesota. Tom Clayton. Uh, one if by land. Can you take it? Sea. <laughs> <laughs> Can you take it, Pennsylvania? Yes, Jerry Flood has an idea. The answer. Two by sea. So, uh, one if by land, two right, by two, sea. Two, so two lanterns was the answer. Two, two, yeah. two lanterns. Was, I'm going to give it to Pennsylvania. You got a chance at a 20-point bonus. For 20 points, Pennsylvania, who is said to have broken the Gordian knot? The Gordian Marge swimmer. Uh, Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great for 20 points, Pennsylvania. All right, here we go back to a toss-up question. If you can tell us how a spelunker whiles away his free time. Pennsylvania. Ed Becker. Exploring caves. Right for 10 points, you want a chance at a 20-point bonus, Pennsylvania. For 20 points, tell us who was the only woman ever to be queen of both England and France. Anybody on the Pennsylvania team? Ed? It would be Eleanor of Aquitaine? You'd be right for 20 points, Pennsylvania. <laughs> All right, here we go back to a toss-up question. For a toss-up question. What's the score, Roger? Right now, the score is Minnesota 355 points, Pennsylvania 175 points. We have 15 seconds to go. Huh? Okay, here's a 10-point ten, ten toss-up. The Manasseh Mauler is his nickname. Who is he? Pennsylvania. Ed Becker. Jack Dempsey. 10 points, 30-point bonus coming up for 10 points. Complete each of the following statements of relationship. Canada is to the British Commonwealth of Nations what Indochina is to what? France. France. Okay, for ten points. You might... I'm sorry, that's it. Time's up, Alan, but the game's over for this week. The final score in the College Quiz Bowl tonight is 195 points for Pennsylvania and 335 points for the winner, Minnesota. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's... 355 points. 355 points for the winner, Minnesota. To each member of the Pennsylvania team, it's our pleasure to award an attractive and dependable Whitnauer wristwatch. A distinguished member of the Longines Whitnauer family of fine watches. Since 1866, makers of watches of the highest character. For fielding the winning team tonight, Minnesota will receive a $500 gift to be administered by the college. And these varsity scholars from Minnesota will return again next week. College Quiz Bowl is an NBC Radio Network production originated and produced by John Moses and Don Reed, directed by Ken McGregor, Howard Reed speaking.